Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at real versus nominal interest rates. With that said, let's get into it. So let's kick things off looking at the nominal interest rate. And the nominal interest rate is also known as the coupon rate, which represents the direct cost borrowers incur from lenders without considering additional economic influences. So for example, if you walk into a car dealership and they say that there is a loan on a car that you could get for 6.99%, that would be the nominal interest rate. Or maybe you're saving money in a GIC and it says a 4% rate, that would be the nominal rate. Switching things over, the real interest rate is a little bit different because the real interest rate takes into consideration inflation, which provides a more accurate measurement of a borrower's purchasing power after the loan has been paid off. So because it's looking at inflation, it's looking at the value of your money, not just the loan rate in terms of nominal numbers, but rather how much your money is actually worth, whether you're borrowing or you're lending. So it actually uses a formula and the formula for the real interest rate is the real interest rate is equal to the nominal rate minus the inflation rate. Let's solidify our understanding with an example. So suppose in an economy you're given the nominal interest rate at 7% and the inflation rate at 2%. Well, if you're asked to find the nominal rate, it'd be easy because it's given to you. The nominal interest rate is just 7%. But the real interest rate follows that formula we talked about before. So the real interest rate is equal to the nominal rate minus the inflation rate. In this case, the real interest rate is equal to 7% minus 2%, which obviously is just 5%. But this might have you thinking, is it possible to have a negative real interest rate? And the answer is yes. Take a look at this example in our economy where the nominal interest rate is 3% and the inflation rate is 5%. So here we see a low interest rate and a high inflation rate. And therefore using the same calculation, real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate will give us a value of 3% minus 5% which is negative 2%. Now, whether this is good or bad news depends on if you're the borrower or the lender. Because if you're the borrower, that is you owe interest, then this is great news. It means you're actually saving 2% because inflation is higher than the nominal interest rate. However, if you're the lender or you're the person who's collecting the interest, it's actually bad news. It means you're earning 2% less on your return. So once again, whether you're happy with an interest rate of negative two depends on if you're on the lending or the borrowing side of the interest rate equation. Now we have another video on the channel about the effective interest rate, and this is something that includes compounding over periods. So if that's something you're interested in, take a look at that video. We hope that you found this video helpful, and if you did, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic topics or homework questions you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch you in the next.